trilobites. They swarmed the seas for 270 million years. They spread around the world and conquered virtually every marine habitat. They clung on through extinctions and environmental catastrophes right up until the end of the Permian, the greatest mass extinction of all time. Now trilobites are found not on the seabed, but in rocks. Their fossilized shells make for spectacular display pieces, and they also tell paleontologists a lot about what the earth was like before humans and even dinosaurs existed. Hello everyone, I'm Thomas and this is Alan, a trilobite who is approaching his 400 millionth birthday. Today I'd like to share what I've learned about trilobites, and Alan is going to help me out. I think these are really fascinating animals, and I hope that by the end of this video, you'll agree with me. This particular specimen was given to me by a friend whose father happens to be a paleontologist. Alan comes from Morocco, where trilobite mining makes a serious contribution to the economy. Unfortunately, forgeries are very common, which is why Alan was thoroughly tested to make sure he's a genuine fossil and not a fake. Like all trilobites, he had a flexible shell made up of dozens of individual segments. Jointed shells like this are distinctive of the arthropods, the same phylum that includes insects, arachnids, myriapods like the centipede, and isopods like the slater or pill bug. Trilobite shells were composed of calcium carbonate, like the shells of many living arthropods. They protected the soft muscles and organs inside from predators, including larger invertebrates and early fish. Trilobites had eyes and antennae sprouting from their head to sense the environment around them. Their eyes are particularly remarkable. They are made of calcium carbonate like the rest of the shell, but in a crystalline form known as calcite. Some trilobites had eyes made up of thousands of individual lenses. Each lens was a single crystal of calcite that could direct light into a simple photoreceptor cell, which would in turn send a signal to the brain. The more lenses a trilobite had, the more detail it could see. No other animal, extinct or living, had eyes quite like these. The name trilobite comes from the fact that their shells were broadly divided into three lobes, as you can see here. The axial lobe in the center is relatively thin and higher than the rest of the body. The two plural lobes spread out on either side. A trilobite's body can also be divided into three major functional sections. Here I've color coded the sections. This blue region, where the eyes are located, is the cephalon or head. The middle purple region is the thorax. Then this red region at the back is the pygidium or the tail end. The pygidium often consisted of small segments of the thorax that fused together as the trilobite grew, becoming a sturdy shield. These animals were armored on the underside as well. Under the cephalon was a plate called the hypostome that protected vital organs and was sometimes shaped like a knife or a fork to help the trilobite grab prey items from the front. A train of legs and gill supports stuck out from under the thorax, allowing the animal to move and breathe efficiently. This is a cross section through one segment of the thorax that shows the major internal features of a typical trilobite. With hundreds of millions of years of evolution, trilobites diversified into a staggering variety of shapes, sizes, and proportions. This was made possible by the segmented, jointed body plan shared by all arthropods. The smallest of all were known as agnostids. Some agnostic species grew to a millimeter or two in size, and had a matching cephalon and pygidium, as if they had two heads. They probably spent their entire lives drifting in the water column as plankton. The largest species, known appropriately as Isotelus rex, belongs to the Asaphid order. Trilobite bodies often fell into pieces after they died, and their soft tissues rotted away, leaving scraps of armor behind. Occasionally, however, their shells stayed intact and formed complete fossils. The largest complete fossil of Isotelus rex is 72 centimeters long a creepy crawly the size of a large house cat. Trilobites also managed to survive in practically every marine habitat. Many crawled around on the seabed, filtering through the mud and sand there to find food. Some were able to swim freely and feed on plankton. 
Some lived underneath anoxic mud, where they depended on sulfur-eating bacteria for energy. There is even evidence that some trilobites lived in the abyss, several kilometers below the surface of the ocean. This begs the question, since so much of the deep ocean is still to be explored, could there still be trilobites living down there? Some paleontologists fancy the idea that, rather than going extinct 250 million years ago, trilobites may have clung on in the dark abyss, waiting to be rediscovered like an arthropod version of the coelacanth. If you enjoyed this presentation, be sure to try out more of the earth science videos on my channel. You can also find links to other websites for more information about trilobites in the video description. We know plenty about them already, thanks to the sheer abundance of their fossils, but when it comes to trilobites, there are always more surprises in store. Thank you very much for watching.